So what do kidneys, smoking, and polio all have in common? Before today, I would not have been able to tell you. But come to find out, in 1950s, these were all big ticket items. Before 1954, all transplants were done by taking an organ from a recently dead, deceased person and putting it in a live person. Now, because the medical advancements hadn't been made yet, the organ would usually, the body would usually reject the organ and the person would end up dying. Now, on December the 23rd of 1954, the first live to live patient procedure was done and it was successful. A kidney was transplanted between two twin brothers, Richard and Ronald. Richard had been diagnosed with kidney disease, so his kidneys were failing him. The surgery took over five hours, but it was successful, and Richard ended up living eight more years. Now, because the body did not recognize it as a new kidney because they were twins, the body didn't reject it. Smoking. Starting in 1952, Dr. Hammond and Dr. Horn gathered 22,000 volunteers from the American Cancer Society. They started a study to figure out if there were any medical conditions linked with smoking. They gathered men from 50 to 69 across 10 states, which came out to be 188,000 participants. They asked these men how often they smoked, what they smoked, and how much they smoked. They checked up again in November of 1952 to see how many people had passed or to ask the living the same questions. They followed these men for 20 months, continuing to ask the same questions. They found out that a higher death rate due to heart disease and cancer ran with those who smoked. In June 1954, they spoke at the American Medical Association Annual Conference. They stated that the deaths that were caused by cancer or heart disease were a cause and effect relationship with smoking. After they stated this, they did another study, this one much bigger. They ended up studying over a million men and women, but they got the same results. After this larger study, they wrote a letter to President Kennedy letting them know what they had found out. President Kennedy put his general surgeon on it to see if these facts were true. After he had finished his investigation, the Surgeon General stated that cigarette smoking is a health hazard of significant importance in the United States. Once this was released, Smoking, the smoking rate in the United States has gone down by more than half. Polio. Polio isn't as big in our day as it used to be back then. So polio is a disease that causes different degrees of paralyzation. In 1952, there are more than 58,000 new cases in the United States a year. And over 3,000 people had already died due to this. But in March of March 26th of 1953, Dr. James Salk announced that he had successfully tested a vaccine. In 1954, clinical trials started. The largest amount of volunteers in medical history came out. It was more than 325,000 doctors, nurses, teachers, and citizens came to help with these trials. And over 2 million children were given the vaccine and placebos. In 1955, it was announced that the vaccine was effective and safe. New polio cases dropped to under 6,000 a year in 1975 when the vaccine became readily available to the country. Today, there's only a handful of new polio cases a year in the United States. And normally those are brought in from other countries where polio is still a problem. I hope you learned something.